Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. President Andrzej Duda has condemned the Belarusian authorities after two TV journalists were jailed on charges of inciting protests. A court in Minsk jailed the TV journalists from Poland-owned Belsat, Katarina Andreeva and Daria Hutsova for two years on charges of inciting and filming the protests. Belarus has seen mass protests since Alexander Lukashenko declared himself the winner of a disputed presidential election in August 2020. The president of Poland, Andrzej Duda, instructed Polish diplomats in Minsk to convey to the Belarusian authorities his firm opposition to the repression of freedom of speech and civil rights, has called for the cessation of such activities and an amnesty for the prisoners, presidential aide Krzysztof Szczelski tweeted on Thursday. After the summit of the Visi Group leaders, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban handed over to Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki the Renaissance armour of King Sigismund II Augustus, the last of the Jagolians. As the Prime Minister said, from now on it is another symbol of Polish-Hungarian friendship. Sigmund August był bratankiem. Sigismund II Augustus was a nephew of the Hungarian king. When he married his first wife, from the Habsburg dynasty, he received this suit of armour as a wedding gift from his future father-in-law. Well-informed sources stated that the suit of armour later ended up in the collection of a Hungarian nobleman. Being in possession of King Sigismund II Augustus's armour will give our military exhibition a completely new dimension. We should remember that this type of 16th century suit of armour, which belonged to a teenager and was the personal suit of armour of a historical figure, has no equal in Poland. And even internationally, there are only two other suits of armour that can compare. The Australian public is in uproar after Facebook's surprise decision to block all media content from news feeds in Australia. The decision has had a dramatic impact on people's access to information, with government pages and emergency safety networks also going dark. Facebook's moves represent a split from Google after they joined together for years to campaign against laws designed effectively to force them to strike deals with media companies or have fees set for them. Both had threatened to cancel services in Australia, but Google has instead sealed preemptive deals with several outlets in recent days. I think Facebook banning news is terrible, actually. Um, I do use Facebook. It seems to be a catch-all, um, and I can get all of my news in the one spot, so it will really impact me. Yeah, I think it's crazy. I think I'm, so I'm a software developer, so I'm fascinated to see how that the ban is actually affecting other sites that are getting crashed and, um, yeah, that bombs getting turned off and everything like that, yeah. The move was swiftly criticised by news producers, politicians and human rights advocates, particularly as it became clear that official health pages, emergency safety warnings and welfare networks had all been scrubbed from the site along with the news. This is outrageous and unacceptable. We expect that Facebook will fix these actions immediately and never repeat them again. This is an assault on a sovereign nation. It is an assault on people's freedom and in particular, it is an utter abuse of big technologies, market power and control over technology. Facebook said in its statement that the law, which is expected to be passed by Parliament within days, fundamentally misunderstands the relationship between itself and publishers and that it faced a stark choice of complying or banning news content. Croatian Prime Minister Andrzej Plenković has revealed that the country is in contact with the Russian government over possibly purchasing supplies of its Sputnik V vaccine, but that it will wait for approval by the European Union's medicines regulator. Hungary has previously taken a similar decision. Prime Minister Andrzej Plenković stated that his government wanted to explore other options because of the slow rollout of vaccines in the European Union. Neighbouring Hungary has approved both the Sputnik V and China's Sinopharm vaccines. We are now in the position that supplies of vaccines have slowed down on the territory of the European Union and we wish to see what other options are and eventually to provide the vaccines which, for example like Sputnik, can be available. We have established initial contacts with the Russian side. Our ministers of health and foreign affairs will make certain queries and certain requirements to the Russian side. What we expect at the same time is that Russia, which currently has contacts with the European Medicines Agency at the level of the Scientific Committee and the Croatian Medicines Regulator, will also take part in the verification process. If Sputnik obtains the approval of the European Medicines Agency, we wish to be in a position to have ordered certain quantities of doses in a timely way, so that we manage to fill the gaps that currently exist. 
procedure. Ako se istodobno dogodi da Sputnik dobije odobrenje Europske agencije za lijekove... European Union countries have so far lagged behind the United States and former EU member state the United Kingdom in distributing vaccines against the coronavirus pandemic, creating political pressure on EU governments to speed up their vaccination programs. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather and Poland daily business. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.